as a researcher, you are interested in collecting data so that you can infer from analyzing that data. For data collection, we use variety of tools and one of that tool is scale. What is a scale? What are different types of scales? And how does it affect our data collection? That needs to be known so that you can take a studied decision about use of scales. Scales are generally used for measuring variables. In any research, there are variables which the researcher is interested in studying. They are variables means they are changing. They change. For example, achievement in mathematics is a variable because it changes according to person. Person A and person B may not have the same achievement or person A himself or herself also may have different achievement at different times. So this is called a variable. And now for assessing that variable, we use variety of tools. One of that tool is a scale. Steven says that scaling is the assignment of objects to numbers according to a rule. Generally, the objects are not assigned any number. But when we use a scale, that object can get a score. And by which process we get this? That process is called a scaling process. Many variables are qualitative variables. For example, personality traits. Now to convert that into quantitative traits, quantitative number is a challenge. This can be done by using scales. Scaling is the branch of measurement that involves the construction of an instrument that associates qualitative constructs with quantitative metric units. The psychologists had this challenge how to quantify unmeasurable variables. Variables such as authoritarianism. Now it's a variable, but can it be quantified? Yes, it can be provided you use certain types of scales which would give you quantification of this state. Constructs like self-esteem, self-concept, how do we quantify them? By using scaling technique, this is possible. We will see what are different types of scales available and how does it help the researcher to know more about the scaling process. There are four types of scales, nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale and ratio scale. Let us see each one in detail. Nominal scale, it's not a scale really, it is only a nominal scale. So we are just giving one number to that person. For example, if you ask a question, what is your gender, male, female. So instead of saying M and F, we, if we give a number 1 and 2, that doesn't really tell you that the sequence of it. It is just a number. What is the color of your hair? Now there can be 5, 6 different colors. They really do not tell you the sequence, the hierarchy, the taxonomy, nothing. It's only a number assigned to them. Black is number 1, gray is number 2 and so on. So this is actually, it is not a scale, but we use it as a scale, so we call it a nominal scale. We are only labeling the variables by using nominal scale. Ordinal scale. Ordinal means there is an order, there is a sequence. Here, the order of the values is important and significant, but the difference between each one is not really known. Say for example, how do you feel today? Very happy, unhappy, okay, happy, unhappy, whatever. So we give this five. Do we really know that the distance between two, okay and happy, and okay and unhappy is same? No, we cannot say that. But we have given the numbers from 1 to 5, from very unhappy to very happy. There is a sequence, but the distance between these two, the value between these two levels is really not known. Another example you can see, how satisfied are you with our services? 
Now the answers could be very unsatisfied, somewhat unsatisfied, neutral, somewhat satisfied and very satisfied. Similar to previous example, here also there are five categories. There is a sequence because we are talking from very unsatisfiedness to very satisfiedness. But we have the five categories, do we really know the distance between these two is equal? We cannot say that. So this kind of scale is called ordinal scale. The third type of scale is interval scale. Here the word interval tells us that we know exact value of it. This is a numerical scale where we know the order and we also know exact interval value between any two categories. Now if you take an example of temperature, we express the temperature in degree Celsius. Now Celsius is a continuum. If you take 27 degrees and 28 degrees, there is some distance. But if you take 64 and 65, there is also 1 degree. This will be exactly same. So this kind of intervals on the continuum is same. So this is called interval scale. Though there is an order and there is a fixed interval, there is really no true zero. On this interval scale, there are intervals of equal distance, but there is no true zero. What does that mean? Is there a situation when there is no temperature? Is there a situation where there is no height? No. So there is no true zero. We will see the next type and then we will understand what is the significance of true zero. But we must know here that the interval scales are better than the first two nominal and uh, ordinal because we can use lot of statistics with these scale scores. The fourth type of scale is ratio scale. There is a ratio, ratio between any two values. It has an order. So this is a variable can be put into ratio scale where it will give you an order it will give you exact value between two units, but it will also have an absolute zero. Now if you take a scale which measures the weight or the height, now you will see there is a zero there on this. Absolute zero is required for any ratio scale. This is the highest level of scale where we can use inferential statistics, not only descriptive statistics, but inferential statistics can be used because there is a ratio, there is a true or absolute zero. The variables used in ratio scale can be added, subtracted, divided. You can use many mathematical processes on it because there is a ratio, because there is a true zero. If you refer to nominal scale, can you add the gender? Can you add, if you have so many responses from different people, you cannot go on adding that because this does not give you a facility of adding or subtracting, which is possible here in ratio scale. And as I said before, a lot of inferential statistics also can be used on ratio scale. Let us take a comparative view of these four types of scales. Nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale and ratio scale. Now if you take a frequency count, it talks about frequency distribution. In all four scales, you will get a frequency count. Second characteristic is, can you calculate mean and mode and median? It is not possible with nominal scale, you cannot add that. But with ordinal scale, it is possible. If you give a score to that, you can find out a mode and median because you are not adding. Mode tells you the maximum occurrence. Median tells you the middle point. Actually, you are not performing any addition, subtraction processes on this. So in ordinal scale, you can get median and mode. In interval scale, yes, definitely you can get median and mode. Similarly, higher or highest level is ratio scale. You can get this as well. The third characteristic we want to see, the order of values is known. We have seen in nominal scale, there is no order. In ordinal scale, yes, there is an order. So we know the value of order. But we have said that the distance between two is not known, but order is known. Similarly, in interval scale and ratio scale, order is known. 
The fourth one is can quantify the difference between each value. Can quantify the difference between each value. Of course, it is not possible in the first two. Interval scale, yes, it is possible. And certainly whatever is possible in interval scale, that is also possible in ratio scale. Can add or subtract values. In interval scale, it is possible. Of course, in ratio scale, it is possible. You can multiply and divide in ratio scale. Divide means you get a ratio. This is a ratio scale, so you can use multiplication and division in this. You can perform these operations on the scores which you get. And lastly, has true zero. The first three scales do not have the true or absolute zero. The last one, ratio scale, does have absolute or true zero. There are two types of scales, unidimensional and multidimensional scale. Unidimensional means there is only one dimension. For example, if you see here, height, either it is tall or short, self-esteem, less or more. That is the only dimension it has. If you go to multidimensional, we can see there are two dimensions, there are three dimensions or multidimension. So two dimension, if you see here, one of the examples given is model of intelligence, verbal intelligence, which also can be quantified. So we see here there are two dimensions. Another example is of three dimensions. In this dimension, you are using a scale for activity, for evaluation, as well as its potency. This type of scale we will see later. This is called semantic differential scale, but it has three dimensions. With more dimensions, now recently with the use of ICT, people have been developing different multidimensional tools like concept mapping. Keeping these characteristics of scales in mind, the researcher has to select what type of scale is most suited for his or her research and then select it accordingly. Because that once you collect the data, data analysis will help you to come out with your findings and these findings are related to your data which you have collected. This refers to the variables and as we have said, the scales are used for measuring variables. So the researcher has to be very clear, if I have to measure these variables, which scales are most suited for it. We have seen earlier that there are variety of scales available for measuring the variables. We have already seen rating scales. Now there are attitude scales as well. Attitudes or variety of personality traits can be assessed, evaluated by using attitude scale. These are also called as opinionaire because this elicits opinions of the rater on particular trait. This can be done on a three point scale, five point scale or even seven point scale. It is a scale that means it has a continuum, it has points three, five, seven, ten. The number is decided by the researcher. But what is to be judged? These are the statements, these are the traits which the researcher identifies and rates. These variables are abstract, but by giving quantifiable number to it, we can generalize. So the scales, attitude scales can be used for generalization of attitudes, interest and variety of personality traits. In an opinionaire or an attitude scale, there are statements. These statements should be short, comprehensible and also based on the thematic elements of the research. These statements are written in the first column and then there is a range. This range gives you two different end points, extreme points. So you can start from strongly disagree and go to strongly agree. You can say very happy to very unhappy. Two extreme ends has to be, have to be selected and then the traits are rated on this continuum. Naturally, there is no correct or wrong answers. We are talking about the traits and how they are observed on a particular continuum. We will see variety of scales are available to us, which, is, which are developed by different psychologists, educationists, and they have elaborate procedure for construction of 
opinion air or attitude scale. We, are, we will not go into the details of construction of attitude scale, but we will discuss about their characteristics, about their use, about their effectiveness for any researcher. Widely used procedures of scaling can be listed as four. One is Thurston scale developed by Robert Thurston in 1929, Likert scale developed by Rensis Likert in 1932, Gutman scale developed by Louis Gutman in 1940s, and Semantic Differential Scale developed by Charles Osgood in 1964. We will see in detail because these are the scales which are widely used by the researchers. Thurston Scale. Robert Thurston is one of the first scaling theorists. He developed unidimensional scale, but he gave us three different methods of developing the scales. And they are method of equal appearing intervals, method of successive intervals, and method of paired comparison. Now let us see one example. We want to assess attitude towards AIDS. Now this attitude can be positive attitude, it can be negative attitude. So if we have 20 statements, generally it is restricted to 20. We cannot have 50 items, say 20 items. These 20 statements, you will have 10 positive and 10 negative statements. You will see that the statements are written and whether they agree or they do not agree. That means they disagree. We ask them, do you agree with this statement or do you disagree with this statement? If they agree with positive statement, they will get one score. If they agree with negative statement, they will get a zero score. With negative statements, they should not agree. With positive statement, they should agree. So they will get one score. So scoring is also decided beforehand. See this example, people with AIDS are like my parents, agree, disagree. People with AIDS deserve what they got, agree, disagree. AIDS affects us all. AIDS will never happen to me. It is easy to get AIDS. Here you just saw five statements and the writer has to say agree or disagree. If you compare this with Likert scale, you will see that it overcomes the limitation of Likert scale. The strength of an individual item is taken into account in computing the attitude score. When you are taking a score because you have already given positive score 1 and negative score, if it is negatively disagreed, then you get one score. It also can accommodate neutral statements. We have seen that out of those five, not every item is positive or negative there is one statement which is neutral. So we can have neutral statements as well. There is another scale which is widely used by the researchers is called Likert scale. Likert scale is generally used for uh, assessing attitudes where the respondent talks about strongly agree to strongly disagree, which means the statements are very strongly positive to very strongly negative and the, the observer or the respondent is asked to rate. Likert scale itself has five points. So generally Likert scale is five point scale, but we can modify that. We can have seven points, we can have three points, but the original Likert scale had five points. So that attitude towards a particular thing is divided into several parts and each part is projected as a statement. Now the score on all these aspects, all these statements is collected together to give a score to that attitude. So the attitude towards AIDS, attitude towards women's education, so these can be cumulative score which talks about the respondent's attitude towards these variables. The categories on Likert scale we can use variety of things. Let us see some of these examples from never to always. Never, seldom, sometimes, often, always. Now it is a five point scale which gives the range from never to always. Another range is strongly agree, agree about 50-50 means I am not sure whether to agree or not agree, then disagree and then strongly disagree. This is also a five point scale. Strongly approve to strongly disapprove, 
This is another five-point scale. Strongly opposed to strongly unopposed. And we can have five points in between. This is basically Likert scale categories. So when we prepare the statements related to attitude towards any event, towards any content, towards any concept or a phrase, those statements will give you a cumulative score based on these five categories. Let us say one example about some people have undergone a computer training program and how do they like this, how do they feel about it. This attitude towards this training is checked, assessed by using Likert scale. Let us say this example, the respondents have gone through a training program of a particular computer software. Now this Likert scale is asking them about their attitude towards that. This is a continuum from strongly disagree to strongly agree. See the list of statements asked. I am satisfied with it, strongly agree to strongly disagree. And there is a continuum from 1 to 7. This is a 7 point scale. So 1 is strongly disagree and 7 is strongly agree. Now the respondent has to put a tick mark on a particular number. It is simple to use. It is fun to use. It does everything I would expect it to do. I don't notice any inconsistencies as I use it. It is very user friendly and many such aspects of that software can be listed and then the respondent is asked to rate each statement on a 7 point scale. The total score will give you the attitude of the respondent towards use of that software. The same Likert scale can also be visually represented. Please see this example. The same statements are here. Instead of having a line, we have put the numbers in a small circle. The third type of scale which is widely used is Gutman scale. Here there are statements about a particular event or a concept or a thought or an idea about which we want the judgments from the respondents. Now these are arranged, there are many statements about one particular idea, they are arranged in a ever increasing manner. Let us see this example. This was used by Bogardus for social distance. There are five items which are arranged from least extreme to most extreme. Are you willing to permit immigrants to live in your country? Now this is testing an attitude towards immigrants. Second question is, are you willing to permit immigrants to live in your community? The third question is, are you willing to permit immigrants to live in your neighborhood? Fourth question is, are you willing to permit immigrants to live next door to you? The fifth question is, would you permit your child to marry an immigrant? Do you notice that these questions are asked in increasingly moving towards the real idea of that respondent? Now, this is also arranged in a way that if a person is putting a tick mark on three, that means the first two are already included in that. When you move to fourth one, the first three are included in this. This is a hierarchy. Let us see another example. The target attribute is measuring parents' aspirations for their children's educational and career attainment. There are four statements. Achieving success is the only way for my child to repay my efforts as a parent. Agree? Disagree. Going to a good college and getting a good job are important but not essential to my child's happiness. Agree? Disagree. Please see that this is the next step. The third one is happiness is more likely if a person has attained his or her educational and material goals. Now we are talking not about only child, we are talking about happiness. The fourth statement is the customarily valued trappings of success are not a hindrance to true happiness. See the four statements are arranged in hierarchy and as you go higher up, you are agreeing to the one preceding it. Gutman scale arranges the statements in this manner. The continuum may be 3.5 point or it can only ask you agree and disagree. What is more important is those statements which are arranged in a proper sequence. So you can see that the statements are ordered successively higher level of an attitude. So higher you go, the higher statement which you, if you mark, that means you have positive attitude 
towards that particular trait. In Thurston scale, there is a change of direction. Here, there is no change of direction. On the contrary, we are moving towards very near to the attitude which we are checking. It gives you a progression in the same direction. For the Thurston scale, occurrence of a single affirmative response is important. Whereas in Gutman scale, it is the point of transition from affirmative to negative response. It may be about the happiness, it may be about AIDS awareness, it may be about migrants. You see that from it is a transition. We are giving an opportunity to the respondents to respond on this continuum, continuum of the statements. The fourth type of scale, attitude scale is semantic differential scale. It's a word, semantic. What meaning is attached to a word and how you differentiate between these two words is what is judged on a particular trait. So this kind of a scale is called semantic differential scale. This semantic differential scale is based on a thought that any object can be distinguished or differentiated from each other along three dimensions. And these three dimensions are activity, evaluation and potency. Potency is the grade, to what extent. We are also evaluating it and what we are evaluating is an activity which tells you about the trait. We have seen this example of three dimensional scale when we discuss about types of scales. You can see here that evaluation can be unfavorable to favorable, potency can be powerful to powerless, activity can be active to passive. So there are three dimensions. It is a multi-dimensional thing and semantic differential scale which is related to meaning would help you to understand these three aspects. Semantic differential scale tries to measure the attitude of a respondent towards the word, the meaning attached to that word. It also refers to a concept or an event or a process which is described by a particular word. Actually it is not one word, we are taking two extremes of that word. So this semantic differential scale also can be called as bipolar scale. There are two poles, poles apart, good and bad. We are rating anything on these two. Are you thinking this is good or bad? And we are not saying only good and bad, we have a continuum in between. But two poles are good and bad, cool and hot. So we are taking two extremes, these are two poles. So this can also be called as bipolar. Bipolar adjectives are given and the respondent is expected to put a tick mark or rate on this continuum using these two poles. Semantic differentials are often used in market research because they are interested in the feelings about the product. Let us see this example. This is a rating scale to get the ratings, to get the attitude towards policemen. Now to describe the policemen, bipolar adjectives are selected. See these examples, clean and dirty. Now it is a seven point scale. The respondent has to rate on this towards clean or towards dirty. Honest, dishonest, bipolar, kind, cruel, helpful, unhelpful, fair, biased, strong, weak, foolish, wise, energetic, lazy, unreliable, reliable. Now you have seen that two adjectives are selected which describe exactly opposite of each other. So this description is about the policeman and now how do you feel about that? So you have to rate. This bipolar adjectives arrangement, you will see that it's not that all positive are on the left side and all negative are on the right side. It's not so. You can mix them up so that the rater is always on the mark, aware where and what he or she is rating. Otherwise, as we know that rater's central tendency will come in or rater's previous bias will come in and if he or she thinks that it is policemen are not good or policemen are good, they can go to any extreme. So the arrangement of these bipolar adjectives are done in a way that some of them are positive on this side and some of them are negative on this side. See another example, this is about your feelings, your attitude towards agriculture. A range of adjectives are given, they are bipolar adjectives. 
traditional, progressive, simple, complicated. They are like me, they are unlike me. They are friendly, unfriendly, challenging, simple. You see a list of traits which define two different poles are selected and given to the respondents. And on this there is a continuum, 5 point scale, 7 point scale and the rater is advised to rate on that. Here the researcher is interested to understand attitude while the rater is attaching the meaning to the words. Here the words are more important and they are also showing the difference. That is why this is called semantic differential scale. We have already seen the rating scales. What is the difference in this semantic differential is along with there are factors. We have seen that the attitude towards policemen or the attitude towards agriculture. There are factors which are already identified. On the basis of those factors, variety of variables are selected, the words are selected and they are presented. So in addition to the rating scale, what we have here is factorial analysis. Because there are only two words which are bipolar, it is easier to check. It is very simple to use, it is flexible, only thing that we must know exactly the words are simple and understandable and should not be interpreted differently by different raters. If we have this condition that means semantic differential is also affected like any other rating scale because the rater if different respondents define your words differently then naturally what they are rating you will get not so correct ratings. So we have to be careful while using those words, the terms, the semantic or the words which we are selecting, they should be understandable by everyone, not to be interpreted differently by different raters. The validity of semantic differentials is very high. The studies are done to find out, to compare them with the validity of other scales like Likert or Gutman or Thurston and they are also very high. The test status reliability of semantic differential is also very high, which is more than 0.90. That shows that when you use these bipolar adjectives, people do understand and people do rate it, even if you rate it, ask them to rate after 15 days or a gap of certain period. We have seen four different types of scales, which are generally considered as unidimensional scales. We have seen that they are like rating scales, but there are differences. They differ from rating scales to some extent, but major objective, major purpose is to assess attitude, opinion about a thing, event, person, a function or an idea or a thought. So see that these are not measurable things. Now what we are doing by using these scales, we are giving scores to it, we are making it numerical. And this score, which is cumulative score, collated score, will give you an idea about the attitude of a person towards certain things. These are used by researchers quite often. We have seen that they are easy to use, easy to understand and that's why they are popularly used. But to prepare them, to construct them is not an easy task. There are many steps involved and we will see in the next session how these scales are constructed.